Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson is presented by Actistat, Adina Springs, Ashford Stud, Bloodstock Research, Castleton Lions, Claiborne Farm, Doc Lane's Veterinary Pharmacy, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, Keeneland, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, Old Colony Insurance Services, Paul Miller Ford, Pin Oak Stud, Quill and Leather and Tack, Shadwell Farm, Spendthrift Farm, Three Chimneys Farm, and Windstar Farm. Hello everyone and welcome to Thoroughbred Week featuring the fourth winner of the Grade 2 Rebel Stakes for Hall of Fame trainer Bob Baffert and fifth winner of the Grade 1 Santa Margarita Stakes for veteran jockey Corey Nakatani. We begin with turf sprinters at fairgrounds in the Colonel Power Stakes. Some of the parts, the even money favorite, John G. Dooley picks up the call. The opening quarter for some of the parts, 21 and 2 fifths seconds, less than three furlongs to go. Some of the parts in front. On the outside is Bet Seattle. Closing now is Marchman. Gantry will strain away in fourth. Heads are turned for home. Then positive side with expecting cash. And our test was last as they straightened away. Some of the parts taken on by Marchman, who's now ahead to the good. Three sixteenths to go. Marchman just leads from some of the parts. Gantry on the outside, Bet Seattle under pressure. Positive side down the center. The course is running on late two. Inside the final 16th, it's Gantry on the outside, positive side. Gantry and Gantry wins on the green. Three to one second choice, Gantry scores by a length and three quarters of a long shot positive side. Richard Aramia aboard the Keeneland Sales graduate in 103 and four. A graded stakes winner on dirt two years ago and a two-time stakes winner last season, Gantry was coming off a runner-up finish at the F.W. Godin Memorial Stakes over the main track. The seven-year-old gelding by Pulpit was bred in Kentucky by D.J. Stable and was a $140,000 Keeneland September yearling. Trained by Ron Fouché, Gantry has earned $816,000 for Britland Stable. Time for the Built Ford Tough Race of the Week, presented by Paul Miller Ford. Built Ford Tough for over 60 years. To Oaklawn Park for the Grade 3 Razorback Handicap. Governor Charlie, the 2-1 to one favorite, Frank Miramati has the call. And it's right to vote who's been there every step of the way, leads by a length. Golden Lad has chased him the entire journey. Perfect trip for Tap Town, who's asked to go after them. He'll make a three-wide bid. Tap Town within a length and a half of the leader. Majestic City is in fourth. Governor Charlie at the rail has seven lengths to make up as Golden Lad is the new leader at the quarter pole. And he quickly puts a length on right to vote. Tap Town is in third. They're at the top of the stretch. And Golden Lad goes on strongly. Tap Town is chasing with determination second. Right to vote at the rail third. They're followed by Majestic City in the final furlong. And Golden Lad in a stellar performance making short work of the field in the Razorback Handicap. Golden Lad and Jose Lescano, they'll report home six lengths clear. Golden Lad, the winner officially by six and three quarters over Majestic City. Jose Lescano aboard in 143 and three, a 100 brisk speed rating. The fourth consecutive victory for Golden Lad, who won his last three at Gulfstream Park, including a track record performance for a mile and a 16th in his seasonal debut. The four-year-old colt by Medaglia Doro was bred in Kentucky by his owner, Robsham Stables. Trained by Todd Pletcher, Golden Lad has earned nearly $245,000. Watch Thoroughbred Week replays online at tbreadweek.com. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with three-year-old fillies in this segment. Three-year-old stakes action is presented by BC2A Paste. Reduce the likelihood of tying up with BC2A Paste. We begin with the Sakata Stakes from Aqueduct. Undefeated Mamdaha, the 6-5 to five favorite, John Embriel has the call. The quarter, 22 and 4 fifth seconds. Long shot, inspired Sayai has the lead as they go around the turn. Sustainable runs in second. Jones in for Jerry is down at the rail in third. And on the outside is Alpaca Fina in fourth. Almost three lengths to Mamdaha, who's in fifth and seven lengths from the lead. 
then Red Minx and Rock Me Mama. The field comes into the stretch, the half in 46 and two-fifth seconds. Sustainable, inspired say I. Here's Mamduha now gaining on the outside. Alpaca Fina had nowhere to go. Red Minx in behind horses. Mamduha now in front, then Sustainable. Alpaca Fina, they come for the wire, and Mamduha wins the Sakata. The heavy favorite Mamdaha by Shadwell Farm stallion Daher continues her winning streak by a length and a half over Sustainable, Eddie Castro up in 112 flat. After finishing second on debut at Monmouth Park last summer, the Kieran McLaughlin trainee has won her last four, including three consecutive stakes wins. The winner was bred in Kentucky by Shadwell Farm and races in the colors of Shadwell Stable. Mamdaha has earned $230,000. American Produce Records is now available online. Visit brisnet.com slash APR for unlimited access to the pedigrees of more than 3 million thoroughbreds for just $275 a year, now including SAR stats. To Laurel Park for the Caesars Wish Stakes. Steady in love, the 3-5 to five favorite, Dave Rodman has the call. they got to chase down the speed of Avadiva and Christian Santiago Reyes. In second is Sally Gonini, but steady in love now, making steady progress on the outside and reeling in Avid Diva. It's another two to New Zone. Topency Lynx is taken to the outside, five lengths off the lead at the top of the stretch, a 46 and four half mile. As Avid Diva is trying to pull this big upset a long way from the second wire, a quarter of a mile from home. Steady in love, Topency Lynx toward the center of the track is trying to quicken up as well. And they're into the stretch after 113 and 16 for long mark. Steady in love over to that left. Left lead, Abadiva. Lights are coming back on the inside. Oh, Abadiva's running a big race with Steady in Love and Victor Carrasco looking for a riding triple. Abadiva won't go away. She's still stubborn, still second. And New Zone is third. Steady in Love had to work hard. Abadiva hangs on for second at a huge price of the Caesar's Wish. Odds on favorite Steady in Love defeats Logshot Abadiva by a length and three quarters. A riding triple for Victor Carrasco, time with the race 141 flat. Runner up in the wide country stakes in her three year old debut, the Gary Capuano trainee was last seen rolling to a 20 and three quarter length victory in an optional claimer over the track. The filly by Not for Love was bred in Maryland by her owners, ZWP Stable and Nonstop Stable. Steady in Love has been in the money in nine of 10 starts and has earned $180,000. The Spinthrift Farms Share the Upside Stallion of the Week is Line of David, a grade one winner from the direct family of Mr. Prospector. Watch for his first two-year-olds in 2014. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with the grade one Santa Margarita Snakes coming up in this segment. We begin with turf fillies and mares at Gulfstream Park in the Grade 2 Honey Fox Stakes. The field included last year's winner, Center Court, but the 5-2 favorite was Tappacat. Larry Comas has the call. 23 and 3 was the opening quarter mile. They race on the back stretch. Triple Arch on the outside. Effie Trinket at the rail. They match strides on the lead. Runner risk. Triple Charm and Paranda lined up right behind them. Then it's Tappacat inside of Center Court. And still last is Kitten's Point. Only five lengths separate the entire field after a 47 flat half mile. Racing for the turn in the Honey Fox, Effie Trinket and Triple Arch are locked in battle. They're nose to nose on the lead. Paranda third on the far outside. Triple Charm has the rail. Center court circles up four wide. Tappacat is there. Runner risk is dropped back. And then Kitten's Point. They're coming toward the top of the stretch. Effie Trinket comes a bit wide. Turns for home in front. Triple Arch. Here's center court. Down the center. Tappacat is there. And Triple Triple Charm is trying to run on late. It's Center Court. Center Court has taken the lead. Effie Trinket, Kitten's Point flying on the far outside. Center Court, Center Court and Kitten's Point on the wire together. And let's take another look at that photo finish. It's three to one second choice Center Court taking the lead under Julianne Leperu. Kitten's Point and Edgar Prado are gaining with every stride on the outside. Both runners toting 117 pounds. But Center Court holds on to take the photo by a nose to repeat as winner of the Honey Fox. Pace setter Effie Trinket fades to third. Center Court runs a mile on the turf in 133 and three. 
After winning this race last season, center court went on to capture the grade one Jenny Wiley stakes. But the Rusty Arnold trainee was off the board in three subsequent stakes appearances and was making her first start since finishing last in the grade two Boston Spa at Saratoga. The five-year-old mare by Smart Strike was bred in Kentucky by G. Watts Humphrey and the Louise Ireland Humphrey Revocable Trust. Center Court has earned nearly $910,000. Julianne Leperu with the Safe Ride of the Week, presented by Sally Horse Fans, the safest way to the winter circle. To Santa Anita for the Grade 2 Santa Ana Stakes, a Mollyunt, the 4-5 to five favorite, Trevor Denman has the call. Still, only six lengths would cover the lot. They have a half mile to go. Nichols Wild, Emollient starting to turn the pressure on now. Emollient goes looking for the lead. Nichols Wild tries to keep her at bay. Still, Miss Serendipity travels well in third. Can Miss Serendipity find somewhere to run? Floral Romance, White Cap on the outside. Stormy Lucy's in there as well. An emotional kitten that's wide open at the top of the lane. Emollient on the outside. Nichols Wild at the rail. Now here's Emotional Kitten with a big run on the outside. Outside. Going through on the inside, Stormy Lucy. Miss Serendipity's going to have to pull to the extreme outside, but she's let loose now and coming fast on the inside. Stormy Lucy. Stormy Lucy, emotional kitten. Stormy Lucy's going to win it. Stormy Lucy, a big performance. Stormy Lucy rallies to defeat emotional kitten by a length and a half while getting five pounds from the runner up, Rafael Bejarano, aboard the Barrett Cells graduate in 147 flat. Grade one placed at three, and a stakes winner at Golden Gate last fall, Stormy Lucy records her first graded stakes victory. The Frank Lucarelli trainee finished fifth in the grade two Buena Vista stakes in her seasonal debut. The five-year-old mare by Stormy Atlantic was bred in Kentucky by Mercedes Stable and was a $24,000 Barrett's mate two-year-old. Stormy Lucy has earned $392,000 for Erica Gaunt. Equin Ice, grade one winning cold therapy compression bandages. Suited for pre-race and post-race therapy. Draws heat away from the affected surface while cooling the treated area by as much as 15 degrees. To Oaklawn Park for the grade two Azari Stakes. Close hatches the three to five favorite. Frank Miramati has the call. Onto the back stretch they go and close hatches. Leads it by a length. On fire baby on the outside of Magic Union. Another three back to Sister Ginger in fourth. Flashy American inches a bit closer. She's followed by Dixie Strike. Don't Tell Sophia begins her move a little bit early as she tries to chase down Close Hatches, who's uncontested up top, heading to the half-mile pole in the Azari. On Fire Baby and Magic Union have been side-by-side -side the entire journey. Don't Tell Sophia moves up on the outside of Sister Ginger. Dixie Strike is at the rail. She has five to make up. Flashy American is now last. Close Hatches leads by a length midway on the far turn. She's doing it stylishly. On Fire Baby is under pressure now. Magic Union running a good one. Don't tell Sophia's ask for more. They're at the top of the stretch. Close Hatches in control. Don't tell Sophia unleashed on the outside. On Fire Baby is in between them. They're followed by Magic Union. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Close Hatches clinging to the lead. Don't tell Sophia coming after her. And Magic Union on the fence. Then on Fire Baby. Don't tell Sophia trying to get to Close Hatches late. But Close Hatches has something left. And it's Close Hatches in front running fashion to win the Azari. Odds on favorite close hatches the front running winner by a length and a quarter over long shot Magic Union. Joel Rosario aboard in 144 and 1. A two time grade one stakes winner last season, the Belmont trainee was making her first start since finishing second to champion Beholder in the Breeders' Cup distaff. The four year old filly by first defense was bred in Kentucky by Millsec Limited. Close hatches has earned $1,487,000 for Judmont Farms. Close Hatches paid $320 to win, and is the Malone's favorite of the week, presented by Malone's, Lexington's favorite steakhouse. Back to Santa Anita for the Grade 1 Santa Margarita Stakes. Io Tapa, the 7-5 favorite. Once again, here's Trevor Denman. They head to the 5 8 pole, 50 shades of hay along the inside. Let Faith arise between them. Stanwick is right there to you. Hill were on the far side. Marker scrapes the paint just two lengths off these leaders and Stanwick is still comfortable. Only three lengths still covers all those runners and a gap of five back to Spellbound. 
Into the turn they go into Santa Margarita, 50 shades of hay now pushed along. Let faith arise on the far side, Io Tapper. Your hill were extreme outside, Stalwick, and now Spellbound's coming fast from last. Taking an early run, can she keep going? Spellbound's coming fast, gonna have to go wide. They're at the top of the lane, let faith arise. Io Tapper's right there, Stanwick now looking for room. Spellbound extreme outside, they come for home. And it is Let Faith Arise and Io Tapper. Stanwick is chasing them from third. Let Faith Arise keeps on finding on the inside. And Let Faith Arise, a scintillating performance today. Let Faith Arise and Kari Nakatani won the Santa Margarita. Let Faith Arise fights back to turn the tables on her rivals by a length and three quarters. Kori Nakatani, the winning jockey in 148-3. Stretching out for her last two starts, Let Faith Arise was second to Spellbound in the Grade 2 La Canada Stakes and was runner-up to Io Tapa in the Grade 2 Santa Maria Stakes. The four-year-old filly by Calf Lane was bred in Kentucky by her owner Tommytown Thoroughbreds, which stands the winner's sire at stud in California. Trained by Hall of Fame trainer Jerry Hollendorfer, Let Faith Arise has earned $380,000. She's the fifth winner of the Santa Margarita for Nakatani, but his first since Reboletta in 2000. Coming up, the latest winner of the Rebel Stakes for Bob Baffert. Time now for the Feature Race of the Week, presented by Keeneland, investing in racing's future since 1936. To Oakland Park for three-year-olds in the Grade 2 Rebel Stakes. Tapature, winner of the Grade 3 Southwest Stakes, the 2-1 to one favorite. Here's the call by Frank Miramati. And they're off. Kobe's back was off just a step slowly. Strong mandate breaks alertly. Right on Curlin, Tapature in between them. Opportunity up close through the opening furlong. Street strategy is widest of all into the first turn. Sheltowee's boy goes over to the rail. Then it's Jet Cat. And Kobe's back is racing about five wide. And he's tough to handle through the opening furlong. Right on Curlin, Strong Mandate. Strong Mandate has his head in front. Opportunity, perfect trip, third. Street Strategy is just outside of him, and Tapature relaxes nicely, only three lengths off this soft, early tempo. Kobe's back is going for an early bid. He's on the outside of Jet Cat, and that leaves Sheltowee's boy at the back. Down the back stretch they go. Joel Rosario and Strong Mandate carving out the fractions, three quarters of a length. Right on Curlin, second. Opportunity within a length, third. Tapature is eager on the inside. He's got some run in fourth, two and a half lengths off the leader. Street strategy is outside of him. Then it's Sheltowee's boy. Kobe's back has eight to make up, and Jet Cat drops out. Around the far turn, strong mandate, ride on Curlin on even terms. Just behind them, Opportunity third. Tapature needs some racing room. Tapature is loaded coming to the quarter pole. Street strategy hard ridden. Kobe's back was never comfortable. They turn for on strong mandate in the white blinkers. Right on Curlin at the rail. Tapature is just behind them trying to get out with opportunity. There's an eighth of a mile to go. It's strong mandate right on Curlin. Now there's room for Tapature and opportunity. Very close quarters. Lots of bumping going on in the final stages. Opportunity. Tapature nose and nose with right on Curlin. Opportunity puts his head in front of Tapature. Here's the line. Opportunity has won the Rebel. Opportunity takes the roughly run Rebel by half a length over the favorite Tapature, then has to survive a steward's inquiry and withstand a claim of foul to get the official victory. Mike Smith aboard the Keeneland Sales graduate in 143-4. Opportunity broke his maiden in his second start at Santa Anita before shipping to Fairgrounds for a fourth place effort in the Grade 2 Risen Star Stakes. He's the fourth winner of the Rebel in the past five years for Hall of Fame trainer Bob Baffert. The Colt by any given Saturday was bred in Kentucky by Bill and Jim Batts, DJ Stable, Chuck Kidder, and Nancy Robinault. Opportunity has earned $410,000 for Carl Watson, Mike Pegram, and Paul Whiteman. The half-brother to multiple grade one stakes winner executive privilege was consigned by Betts Thoroughbreds to the 2012 Keeneland September yearling sale where he was purchased by Baffert for $300,000. Grade two rebel stakes winner opportunity, the Keeneland sales graduate of the week. We'll see you next week here on Thoroughbred Week. 
Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson has been presented by Actistat, Adina Springs, Ashford Stud, Bloodstock Research, Castleton Lions, Claiborne Farm, Doc Lane's Veterinary Pharmacy, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, Keeneland, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, Old Colony Insurance Services, Paul Miller Ford, Pin Oak Stud, Quill and Leather and Tack, Shadwell Farm, Spendthrift Farm, Free Chimneys Farm, and Windstar Farm. Online at tbreadweek.com.